This is part 4 of Introduction to Stew. In this part, we will talk about the editing section. Let's get started. On the Stew screen, this entire section in the middle is the editing section. Again, we have the timeline here and the movement section here, and the screenshot and parameters over here. First let's see how the timeline works. Basically, the timeline will have operations lined up there, and your bot will execute them sequentially from the top to the bottom. As a very simple example, let's build a copy and paste bot. Starting with dragging and dropping the run program operation. Then, let's say you want to open a notepad to which you type something like hello world. Now using the shortcut key operation, press enter first then control A followed by control C. This way the text string gets copied to the clipboard. Again these three operations in the timeline will be executed from the top to the bottom one by one in a sequential way. Most of the features of the timeline, is accessible by right-clicking on any of the operations. The duplicate menu, copies your operation or operations. Then you have the test options. We has three choices, just test an individual operation, test until the end of the step, to test until the end of the scenario. There is also an option to test only the designated set of operations. Then, you have the feature to move or copy your operations. Toggle skip status menu, allows you to go back and forth between disabling and activating operations. And finally, delete button is here too. Deleting is also possible, by selecting your target operations and then click this trash can. This little icon next to the trash can is same as the toggle skip status menu. Next, I'd like to show you the movement section. When you have a decision tool in the timeline, like in this example, where we have the compare value verification tools, they all contain the result handler. This allows you to build conditional branching. Usually, you have your condition statement, and the result is either true or false. Based on the result, you can make your bot perform various next steps. In this case, true will come to this jump to operation and maybe it will just redo everything one more time. Both true and false have these jump options. When you set these options the arrows will show in the movement section. True movements are shown in blue and the false movements are shown in red. Now let's take a look at the screenshot section. To show the usage of this section a good example is the locate image operation. Tools like the locate image and click and focus uses screen image to navigate the process. Therefore, you have need to capture the screenshot and configure what to do with the image. The icons right here have various features. This one captures the entire screen and this is target icon. Now let us consider the target icon. This will only capture the window image of the target app. However, in this case, just by clicking this icon here will capture an entire screen. Target app screen can be captured by clicking this icon and dragging this little target and releasing it on your target app. As you can see, it also captures the window properties of the target app. This is helpful in building more, so it can add more stability to the process. Next icon is to select an area of the image and designate it as the target image for your bot to look for. Automatically the tool give you two red boxes. The big box is a search area, and the small box is the target image. Now this is the click point icon. This is going to allow you to select a spot on your target image, where your bot is performing various mouse clicks. The different type of clicks include a single click, double and triple click, right click, down only, up only and the mouse over only with no click. Finally, this section right here is for operations parameters. The parameter sections are different from one operations to another, except all the Python plugins have standardized return value and return code for easier flow design of your automation.